Welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, and this is Tuesday. It is August 6th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just to share my own personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. Generally speaking, we'll look at the news and the filings. We'll take a gander at the fundamentals, and of course, we'll look at the chart. But we're not going to be doing a deep dive. So please, follow behind me doing your own due diligence. Now, I do trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And I'm constantly keeping my eye open for a hot penny stock, one that has potential to make us money. And I've got one for us, and we're no stranger to Ron, ticker R-O-N-N, -N. name of the company, Ron, R-O-N-N. -N. It used to be Ron Motors, but they dropped the motors part not too long ago. Now, it is her chart that caught my attention. She's been heating up these last couple of days, breaking through every single 200 across all the charts. They're looking great to me. Now, if memory serves, Ron entered into a merger agreement with Leaf Pharmaceuticals in 2022. In early 2023, they closed that deal and went into business. Their business is hydrogen vehicles. What we're talking about is electric vehicles that are powered by hydrogen fuel cells, not lithium batteries. Hydrogen is a resource we're never going to run out of. You can get hydrogen out of every drop of water. Not so with lithium. We got to rape the earth to get that. Well, the company was working on cars and then all of a sudden they told us they were going to expand into another division, hydrogen production and distribution. They were going to create these hydrogen hubs where they would produce all this hydrogen, create the truck to deliver the hydrogen as well. And that's what they've been doing. And they're about ready to close their first deal up in Canada, which is going to be bringing in a lot of money. So we got a lot of reasons to be looking at this company right now. So Ron, she finished today at 0044 and she was up almost 60% today. She keeps bouncing, hitting it and coming back down to 57 she is on the OTC, the bottom tier. She is on the pink, which is the riskiest tier on the OTC, simply because you don't get a lot of validated information down here. Really, the only validated information you get normally are these two green ticks. And I'm always harping to you to look for these. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't trade a stock that didn't have these but without them, you have no validated information. You're taking the word of the management on everything, even from their news presses. So this at least is about this much reassurance. So I've given you a basic idea of what Ron does. We're going to start here with the news. Ay, ay, ay. Yes, there is a lot of news here. And I don't want to bore you with it because it's important. It shows the progress of what's going on. Now, here's the good news. We're only going to poke our head into four of these pieces. But you see the progress that the company is making. But more importantly, you see a lot of deals. Deals they're making with supporting companies that have technology that they're adding to their business that is helping them to grow. So, as I said, it was back here in 2022 that they entered into that merger agreement with Leaf Pharmaceuticals. They tell us here and... March, <laughs> March of 2023, they were nearly completed with that deal. I don't see a piece of news here that says they completed it. There it is. It was uh, March 30th. They actually completed the deal. But just before they closed that deal, Ron Motor Group selected Comertech as their exclusive global software development company for in-vehicle technology, telematics, and infrastructure. In other words, whatever software they needed for whatever they were doing, this was the company that was going to help them with it. Then we jump all the way up to May of 2023. The company begins formal discussions with a Nairobi group for a hydrogen electric delivery truck pilot program and potential hydrogen hub in support of the new African Hydrogen Alliance. Now, this is a big piece of information. However, we don't get one piece of follow-up news on this. So there's nothing else to add to it except the highlighted portion I just read. Then we get into stuff they have been working on. And this is culminating to what we are looking at as our catalyst. Turtle Island Hydrogen Group and Ron meet with five first Nations Canada tribal chiefs. 
I do believe we are talking about Indian tribal chiefs up there in Canada. They are working on cutting deals and they are progressing on multiple levels. As you're going to see here in November of 2023, Ron signs an agreement with I am one development to provide project development services for Ron's hydrogen pri pilot programs in Canada. They're revving up. In December of 2023, the company signs an exclusive agreement with Net Zero. You've probably heard of them before. Global pioneers in the environmental credit market. They're dealing with hydrogen. When you deal with hydrogen or lithium, any of these green energies, you qualify for carbon credits. If you can eliminate or stop carbon from getting into the atmosphere, they'll pay you for it. So they are entering into some sort of carbon credit deal through net zero here. At the very beginning of the year, the company announces the cancellation of 100 million shares. Woohoo! What a way to start the year. Then we get all the way up here to April. The company agrees to work with H2H to integrate their patented products into Ron Inc. global projects. And then the next one. Ron signs joint venture letter of intent with Hydrogen Horizons. Horizons Horizons. <laughs> These two companies both have patents for technology that they're going to add to their existing technology. You want more information, you're going to have to dive into them. Then we've got a huge piece of news. This is one of them we're going to dive into. Ron Inc. announces that they have signed a 100 million euro Memorandum of Understanding Commitment, targeting their hydrogen vehicles and hydrogen hub projects. We're going to get more information on that one. Then in May, the company signs a strategic partnership, the first of seven contemplated hubs expected to be worth $350 million within First Nations Canada. We're getting excited now, aren't we? First, we're talking 100 million investment. Now we're talking $350 million deals. Jumping up here to the 10th of June, Ron begins discussions in Geneva about its new hyper hydrogen vehicle to be the successor to its Scorpion hydrogen hybrid. They are working on these very specific types of cars. There's some information out there about them. We're not going to focus in on them too much. Then at the end of June, Ron in joint venture talks with Arisha EV, an India-based global company. We're going to look at that one. Then at the end of July, the company announces completion of the latest PCAOB audits. This is real important. The company is, now, and we're going to read this, but the company is planning on uplisting. They want to uplist to the NASDAQ and you have to have two-year audits and then file your S1. Well, they've just finished their two-year audits and they tell us they are just now ready to, put, to file that S1. So it looks like we're on the ball for an uplisting. And then the very last piece of news came out at the beginning of this month. Ron shares updates on the negotiations with Tobik First Nation. So let's dive into those four pieces of news. This is the one that came out on May 16th about the 100 million euro commitment. Ron Inc. signs a memorandum of understanding providing 100 million euros in total financial capital commitment, which has been extended to Ron for strategic investment advancing hydrogen commercialization globally, including their HFCV vehicles and hydrogen hub development. Don't let that confuse you. That is hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, HFCV. Ron Ford, the company CEO, said the investment offer with all the salient terms will be released in the near future. The investment in its present form is expected to be two payments of 50 million euros. The first payment will go directly to Ron Inc. for the hydrogen truck development operation in their First Nations hub project. They are building delivery trucks, obviously that run on hydrogen, that will deliver the hydrogen to wherever it needs to go. The second 50 million euros is targeting complementary hydrogen companies and hydrogen technologies for investment or acquisition. So they got $50 million to go out there and buy up other companies and acquisitions to help them along. I'm liking that. 
This next piece of news came out May 28th, and it's big. Ron Inc. signs a strategic partnership, the first of seven contemplated hubs expected to be worth $350 million within First Nations Canada. The company actually signed an engagement agreement with Tobique First Nations Canada to build and manage a multi-purpose hydrogen production hub pilot program supplied with the company's own hydrogen fuel cell trucks. The company announced it has signed a strategic partnership engagement letter to establish one, a hydrogen production facility, two, an exclusive hydrogen FCEV logistic truck dealership, and three, create a distribution network. And the company has already been paid a million dollars by these people as a good faith investment, showing how serious they are. And if they do back out, the company gets to keep that million dollars. The next piece of news, I've lost all my highlights. Don't you love it? Ron Inc. in joint venture talks with Arisha EV, an India-based global company. Ron Inc. would like to communicate to shareholders about a joint venture and distribution agreement with the CEO of Hydrogen Automotive Trucking EV Division, Arisha, of the powerhouse Rana Group, based in India. Dr. Darshan Rana stated that Rana Group is moving into hydrogen vehicles and hydrogen production globally through the electric truck division, Arisha. The CEO, Ron Ford, stated that these are exciting times for the commercialization of hydrogen around the world. And that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they are in a very strong niche right now. Hydrogen is exploding. I think lithium is going to fall to the wayside, folks. Hydrogen is just cleaner all the way around and less dangerous. We don't have to worry about explosions or fires with this stuff. They tell us here that Ron and Arisha will collaborate on engineering and homolog <laughs> and putting together Arisha's particular markets. Mr. Ford added that having a JV partner would have three significant impacts, a potential cash infusion, support in our drive to senior exchange listing expected this year, and distribution of our hydrogen hub pilot programs and our logistic trucks. So they're looking for companies that can help them, not just with cash, but with technology, with expansions, and they're doing a wonderful job with it. They tell us here that as part of the negotiations, we are seeking to put a number of commitment on sales to initially be approximately 100 vehicles based on a successful pilot and then expanding to 1,000 vehicles. Last piece of news, I'm sure I lost my highlights here too. Ron Inc. provides shareholder update. Ron Ford, the CEO, today provides several updates. Stated on the financial front, it appears that our 100 million euro memorandum of understanding is very close to becoming a final agreement and fully funded. The audits are approximately three weeks out from completion and our S1 is on the track to be filed by the end of July. Now I did go through their filings, I didn't see it. So I'm thinking it's overdue. It should be dropping any time. That's going to be big when that S1 drops. Ron continued that our Tobique First Nations Hub Agreement is awaiting final approval from the Tribal Council. This 1,000 kilogram per day hub is the first of seven anticipated across indigenous lands to create a virtual hydrogen highway across Canada and will include several of our new logistic trucks. Ron added that he has met with seven tribal chiefs supporting this forward looking plan. Then they give us some updates down here. They're working on their class three and class six trucks. They say they have got their engineering completed, their feasibility studies are completed, they have prototypes completed. These are your work trucks, your flatbeds, your vans, the ones that run around the cities with deliveries and stuff. Then they tell us about the cars. Will the new vehicle be a sports car, supercar, or a hypercar? While we like both supercars and hypercars, the company CEO prefers hypercars. Now, I'm not real sure what a hypercar is. A supercar is a supercar. 
I think a hypercar is a super, super car because they say this thing is going to exceed 1,000 horsepower. Who the heck needs that much horsepower? So, we see lots of things right now going on. They have completed their two-year audit and are about ready to drop their S1. That will be a catalyst. When it drops, this should jump. We have multiple deals in the tribal nations. One is about ready to close right now, and he's talking to multiple other tribal chiefs, which are probably going to jump on the bandwagon as well. We've got talk, talks going on in Africa. We got talks going on in India and hydrogen is exploding. And this company's got everything going on with it, with a lot of companies supporting it. And when I see other companies jumping on board, that makes me think this company is a winner. So I'm liking this company all the way around right now. I believe in hydrogen all the way. The only other energy that can surpass hydrogen truly is nuclear. It is huge energy. We depend on it in the biggest way. It is super clean, but it has that factor of danger in it. And we all feel that even though we pretty much keep it under control, it's always on the back burner. We don't have that problem with hydrogen. All right. Now that you've got some information about the company, let's go get some information about the stock. What was the relative volume for Ron today? Not bad. On the OTC, Pink, she has been doing over 27 million shares a day for the last 30 days as an average. That's not under the radar. But today she jumped, I'm not going to say 100%, but a solid 80%. She went up to almost 48 million. Share structure for Ron. Oh, come on. I didn't look at this, so I had no clue what it was going to be. Ouch. I'm not crazy about that. Outstanding share counts, kind of high. We got 1.2 billion shares out there. Insiders own about, oh, let's call it a quarter billion. And we get all the rest, about 930 million. It's a pretty high float. And what's really scary is that they could do a reverse stock split. Now, I have not gone through their filings to see if they have one already approved from a shareholder meeting. I have not done a search on Google. I would advise you do a search if you're thinking about getting into this company for a long hold. Just go to Google, put in the company's name, put in the company ticker, which is the same thing. Put in a shareholder meeting, vote, and then two other words, split and consolidation. If they've had one, it will come up. Not to say they've had a split, but if they've had a vote and approved it. Because if there's one sitting on the books approved, they don't have to tell you they're going to do it before they do it. They've already told us that when we had the vote. That's why it's good to know. So right now we're at 004. We have seen a lot of these penny stocks. Once they start closing in on a penny and are real popular and have been climbing for a while, boom, out of the clear blue, we have a reverse stock split. Just saying. Market cap for Ron right now is about 3.2 million. Financials. They don't have any money. We got nothing on the annual. We got nothing on the quarterly. We want to see some money coming in. That'll be another catalyst. Looking at her balance sheet. Now, we've got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. So her bank account has more than $26 in it. It's got $26,000 in it. It's not a lot, but it's better than 26. Total assets for the company, we're at roughly 20 million. Total liabilities, ooh, less than half, 8.7. So we are actually holding stockholder equity in this company of just over $11 million. Taking a look at the disclosures. All right, we're looking for an S1. We don't have an S1 there. Hasn't come out yet. Last filing came out in April. Now, there was one filing I did open up. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but I just wanted to show you that the company has a couple of subsidiaries I was not aware of. They tell us here that Ron Motors Group includes wholly owned subsidiaries, Ron Motors, Shanghai, really, and Ron Motors Technology Taxing Company. Had no clue about that. Then all the way down here at the bottom, one of my favorite places to check is what they call uh, subsequent events. This was an interesting one. I wouldn't have found this anywhere else. 
They tell us here between April 1st, 2024 and May 13th, 2024, the company issued 301 million shares of common stock as a stock conversion. What they did is they took a debtor that they owed a whole bunch of money to and talked him into being an investor rather than giving them a whole bunch of money and losing that money and not getting anything for it, they gave them shares. So they got to keep the money and now that debtor is an investor holding shares for the company. But what that did is it doubled our share count. Well, almost, it was 428, 27 million. Then they went and added 301 million. That kicked it up to 728 million. That's what they say here, outstanding. Now, isn't that interesting, right? We were just over there and what did it say our outstanding share count was? It was in the billions. Well, now that's interesting. What's the date on that? That is today. That's August 5th. It says that there are 1.1 billion shares, but the latest financial, and it says up to May 13th. So somewhere between May 13th and now, they added on another... 400 million shares? I'd have to check that out. Pretty interesting. Then we've got one more subsequent event here. On April 29th, the company signed a joint venture letter of intent with Hydrogen Horizons with the purpose of further enhancing the commercialization of hydrogen around the globe. Through this joint venture, the company will incorporate as many H2H products into its projects as possible, as well as improve the company's hydrogen hub projects. So there you go, folks. We got a ton of information, lots of things going on, deals about ready to close, big investments, big deals. I mean, there's just a ton going on. And what I see is this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. And once this company starts to make revenues, all of these hubs are going to be generating revenues from producing and distributing hydrogen. Then they're going to be selling delivery trucks to all of those hubs. That's going to make them money. And they're going to be selling vehicles. Don't know when that's going to happen, but that's on the back burner now because hydrogen production is huge. All right, as you can see, I'm excited. And that's before we even look at the chart. The chart is the exciting part to me. Let's go take a look at it. So let's dive into that charting for Ron on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. Got this opened up to a one day, one year chart. And you can see she's been in a downtrend, a real strong one. A year ago, we had a 52 week high just under nine cents. And we had a 52 week low hit in April of triple zero two. Now, the primary reason I brought up the one-year chart is to show you where my supports and resistances, my S&Rs, are coming from. At least these big, long ones that go all the way back. We got three of them here at uh, 1.6 cents, 2.2 cents, and 3.2 cents. And our current price is way down at 004. Now, as you can see, on our way down here, we've had some big jumps. This one here is about 400%. That's about 500%. And this one here is about 400% as well. And it has been since about May, all of this volume has come into the picture. Jump on down to our six month, four hour view. So there's our high on our six month chart. We're at five and a half cents. You can see she shot up there and tagged that 200 day SMA, which was on a very serious decline here. And right down here, she started going flat when we had our breakout attempt. And there was about a 400% run there as well. Then she came back down to a support right here at about 0078. And she bounced on that for a while until she fell underneath the 200. She just laid down there waiting for these SMAs to cross the 200, start to bend and start climbing up. And that's when she starts to come up. So everything, all of our SMAs are at that kilt point right now. They're all starting to bend up. Our 200 haul is the slowest because it moves the slowest, but everything else is turning, including our price, which is breaking through the 200. Now I want to show you something here. We're on the four hour chart, but I'm going to drop down to the one hour chart and I want you to see the 200. She is breaking through it really hard. Come on down to our half hour chart. Look at how she is respecting the 200 MA here. And then she took off from it. Let's come on down to our 15 minute. Bouncing off of our 200. 
jumping off of it. You see all the respect the 200s are getting here. And here, bouncing on it uphill. This is beautiful, folks. Every single chart is laying out exactly the way we want to see it. So what we've got here, believe it or not, is a cup and bowl. See right here, she was over the 200. She took a dip underneath the 200, nice and flat, coming back up. This is where she fell. I've got a line drawn. She came right up to it. So what does that mean, a cup and handle? Well, it's a pattern that in many cases has a strong surge right after it appears. We have got our cup right there, but we have no handle. The handle is a dip. It will fall back about one fourth at the most, one third the depth of the cup. When it comes back, it'll normally jump from that point and surge. Well, we've got a perfect place for it to pull back to, right at the perfect zone. If it pulls back to this 200, we'll have ourselves a perfect cup and handle, and normally you'll get a rip, a nice strong run. And that would be the time to sell on that run as she's climbing. Unless, of course, you're going to be hanging around, because I think this company's going to be growing. Oscillators, all of them look good. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is climbing, just had a crossover two days ago. Our MACD is climbing, it just crossed the signal line two days ago, and look at those big green bars getting bigger. And our RSI has just entered into the overbought, which I like. I personally want to see my stock on fire up here, because your RSI is your price line. If you take all these bars and turn them into a line like Google shows on their charts, that's the line it would be. That's why everyone gets excited when the RSI is rising, because the price is rising, right? Jump on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. So there's your cup and handle right there. Did I say cup and bowl earlier? <laughs> I think I did. I'm hearing the echo in the back of my mind cup and handle. That's what they call this. So right here, we were at uh, 0047, hit this low of 0011, started the curve around and look at all of our SMAs. Every single one of them, 200 haul, 50, 20, all getting ready to cross that 200 day MA. Every single one of those will be a golden cross when it occurs. Golden crosses are like turbo boosts to the price climb. I like seeing these. Everybody does. And I think that's why we get a lot of action when you have a golden cross. It's because everybody's watching them, getting excited right alongside of us. So this is looking great. Our 200-day SMA has just now gotten flat on the one hourly. And that's when you see your breakouts. You will see a strong run up. And normally, the first cut through is not the run is not the surge. Normally it will pull back and jump once or twice on top of that 200, making sure it's solid, putting down a foundation before it starts to climb and build higher and higher. I'm liking the one hour chart. Oscillators, all of them are on fire, including our RSI, which is in the overbought. Though it's pulling back a little bit, it's still on fire. It's still hot. <laughs> Let's take a look at that five day, 15 minute. Wow. See what I mean? She started catching heat the last two days. She got on top of the 200 five days ago. She was down at 0013, jumped real quick and hard. Definitely wanted to be on top. Got up here. She started banging on it, right? That's what I said. She'll start banging on it a couple times and then she'll launch herself once she's secure. Obviously, she was secure. Two days ago, she started to run. She was at about... Uh, Oh, let's call it 002. Yesterday, she got up to 003. That was a 50% run. She opened up this morning at 0027 and got up to 0046, giving us almost 60% run today. Now, we can see she's starting to go sideways. She's hitting her head on this resistance I drew from who knows how far back. This is at 0045. She's hitting her head on that. Bang, 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 bang. She needs some extra strength to get through it. Normally, she needs a floor to jump off of, something to push off of. Well, here comes our 20-day SMA. She can get her foot on that and push, and that could push her up over top of this, and she could start to climb easier. If this isn't enough, then we wait for one of the bigger ones. And best scenario, 
She just keeps going sideways, waiting for those SMAs to catch up to her. If she doesn't, she's only got one other option. She has to fall down to them and bounce off of them and ricochet back up. Right now, it is all looking in control. All of our SMAs are climbing smooth, evenly combed. We're going sideways, waiting for the SMAs. It's looking nice. Oscillators, we're getting some weakness now. Sideways activity is a bit weak, so everything is dipping down right now, as you can see with our red bars. And we'll take a quick look at that five day, five minute. It looks like our 15 day with just a lot more clutter. She is bouncing off of her 200 day MA here, shooting right through her 50. We really don't get a lot of activity on the 50. We did get some bounces up here. All this up here is trying to hang on to the 50, her last stronghold before the 200. But if she comes under it, she's not gonna fall all the way down to there. She would fall probably down to here or come back to the 30 minute. Each one of these have a different floor. We don't like that one. That floor is way too far down. So if she does skip, she would probably come down to about 0035, which would be, you can see right here, that would be a soft support, but I don't see it. I think she's got a lot of momentum now. We're about ready to close this big deal for their first of seven of these hydrogen hubs up in Canada. We're talking to India. We're talking to Africa. We haven't heard anything more about these, but when they take off, they're going to be just as big. These are huge projects. And right behind the hydrogen facilities are the truck sales so you can deliver the hydrogen. You might as well buy them from us. We service them, right? So I'm really liking this company. I think we're at the early stages of what they're going to do. As a hydrogen car dealer, eh, I'm not real excited about that. There's a lot of competition there, but creating hydrogen, distributing hydrogen in a world that's going green and hydrogen is just now starting to get recognized as the second clean energy source to nuclear. Nuclear is clean, but we got that danger factor, right? I think lithium is going to fall to the wayside. We'll keep nuclear and hydrogen is going to fill in all the rest of the niches. And this company is right there. I'm liking them. But of course, please do your own due diligence. Never know. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.